Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the Kaiser Redux mod for our new series, Totalist Browderist Ireland. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, Josh, we just did a Totalist series, okay? There was a big gap in that series for like a month, at least a month, I'm not sure, because when, when, when you see a YouTube video, it says one month, but it could actually be like seven weeks, much closer to two months than one. But yes, I, I've had this playthrough kind of running around in my head for a while. And, uh, and I've done a couple of playtests, and I think it's actually going to be quite the fun run, assuming that things kind of go well, because things uh, I've done one test run where things went well, and one test run where things did not go so well. Uh, mainly kind of revolves around Russia, to be honest. Uh, I think uh, I think that I am going to start playing around with the custom country paths, simply because I, I think my PC is beefy enough to the point where it just doesn't matter if I start playing around with these, so I'm going to get the... Maximists in Britain because I, I, I want I want some proper like total war fucking reds, you know, not, not, not some little oh, radical socialist syndicalist. No, I want some fucking total mobilization all adult serve fucking max military factories I want some goddamn commies to fight the Germans because if, if it's just us then it's not gonna go very well now Maximus soon control. Yes Um. I, lo I love how Ireland now is basically just like Russia and America, where you've got a, a path for every ideology. Quite like that. Now, Jack, uh, commune election. Yeah, we'll go with Sorellians. Uh, Red Jacobin. Uh, National Jacobin. Yeah, I don't need to play around with that. The Day of Infamy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Day at restores order. Perfect. I think I'm gonna actually no no I'm not gonna leave it at that. I also I'm also gonna change. I, I I need the Russians to basically do something. So I don't want to spoil it too much. But what happened in both runs actually is that Russia went to war with the Reichs Pact in August of 1938. Uh, in the first run, naturally they naturally they just got completely annihilated. I mean it wasn't even funny that they got rapidly pushed back. Um, so I think they got the Treaty of Vilnius. Is it? I think it's the Treaty of Vilnius where where the the, the peace fires and they lose land. Um, and then that was it for a while, and then the, the um, second Valkyrie started, as usual, uh, a bit earlier though, I think it was in like uh, summer of 1939. And then Russia decided, okay, the war is back on, I didn't hear no bell, time for round two. And Russia went back in and just got stomped, unbelievably stomped. Then in the second test run, Russia also went in of August 30th, but, but in this run they had, uh, they had peacefully annexed Transamur. And I guess that was just enough for them to go from getting their shit kicked in to get it to put to kicking in the German shit because they they were pushing into Ukraine like like they took the uh, left bank of the Dnieper. They were like the, the Germans weren't even fighting the French and the Russians were pushing in hard. It was insane. It was funny actually. Uh, it was like I think the war ended in like 1943, right? So so Russia had, Russia enters Berlin. But they still had not retaken southern Russia. It was actually crazy. I don't. Yeah, they don't. They didn't even have Turkestan. They had Alas autonomy. They had the Far East. Um, funnily enough, they actually did have Georgia and Armenia because they went the long way down through uh, the Balkans and through the Ottomans. Um, but yeah, yeah, they were in Berlin, but they didn't even have Rostov. Unbelievable. But yes, uh, we're gonna get yes the looming chaos, and we're going to get uh, where is it? I think NRPR. Reform, yeah. Or maybe, maybe, maybe you not. Know, maybe Wrangle, Wrangle becomes Czar. That that could be interesting because obviously we're Republicans, you know. The Germans are uh, monarchists, so it it'd kind of be cool to have the Russians also be monarchists, just so that you know, if there's any sort of Cold War scenario, that be Republican versus monarchy, in addition to just you know, white versus red. Yes, I, I, I did go for NRPR reform, actually, in the second test run. I didn't, I didn't go for anything in the first test run. And Zvinkov did not succeed in taking power, even though I selected for it to happen. Um, instead, we got Dmitry Romanov and the oligarchic VNS, which I do not like. I just prefer Vasily Shulgin, social conservative VNS, maybe get the Black Hundredists back, something like that. I do not like the oligarchists. Uh, but yes, we will get Wrangle becomes there. Lovely. And I think I'll probably just leave it at that. All I really want out of Russia is for them to not die. I want Germany to have to fight an Eastern Front. Because in the first test run, Germany did not have an Eastern Front to fight. Well, I guess they kind of did because they were fighting the Japanese and uh, the Brotherhood of Eurasia and Siberia. But that doesn't really count. It wasn't a proper Eastern Front like it should be. But yes. Now that's taken care of. We're going to get Wrangle. going to get the Maximists. Perfect. I'm not, I'm not going to change up uh, 
you know, Spain, Italy, so on and so forth, because I mean, I could flip basically all of Europe totalist and completely ruin Germany, but I just want the British and French to, you know, be on side and, and the Russians to not die, and then I'm happy. Yeah, I'll roll the dice and everything else. Now, Ireland. Lovely. This is actually our second, yeah, our second only series as Ireland and Kaiser Riddick's, and Ireland is a country with a lot of paths. I've got two more um, paths in my head. One of them being the uh, integralist, national, populist, Irish kingdom, Kingdom of Ireland, under James Moulton O'Brien, and the other being just a run where we do not go to war at all, and we just stay as uh, Fina Gael, Michael Collins, and just see how big we can have the economy be, how much money we can make off the war, that kind of stuff. Now, uh, welcome to Kaiser Riddick's. Thank you, and uh, uh, Hetman the Highway. Yeah, that's fine. I also have a naval rework installed because I had a, a different sort of plan for this series at first. I don't think I'm going to read through this in this series. It's a very nice naval rework. It's actually really cool, but uh, I'm not going to be using naval combat too much in this series. Uh, I was originally going to go for some sort of a, like a destroyer build where I just built some dockyards and kind of fought on the seas, but then that kind of really clashed with my getting enough industry to, to do what I want to do on the continent in terms of land forces, so I kind of scrapped that. You know, we will just be building uh, convoys probably, maybe some subs, something like that. Now basic machine tools, construction one. Yeah, I actually know, and that was a good shit, that was a good time to stop and take stock. Okay, so that's 39. Okay, that's 39, so I'll need that. What else will I need? I'll need these two. Uh, I'll need, ideally, yeah, I'll get the, yeah, we get that one. I'd like to get that one. Well, we'll be getting that one, I just want it as early as possible. And is that it? I'll leave, obviously, I'll just support companies. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this run is something very different from what, I, from what I usually do. You know me, I build a lot of infantry. Because usually the AI just kind of folds in front in front of infantry, but we're a minor now, okay? We're not, we're not you know, you know, big swingers like the, the British, the French, the Germans, the Russians, or, you know, the, the Italians, the Ukrainians, so on and so forth. You know, we're small. We've got... 4.22 million population, and, and that's not really going to increase in this series. Because remember, all of our cores and claims are basically on the British and the French, and we're going to be allying with them. So, like, there, there isn't going to be any Celtic Union. Probably. Probably. I, I did have actually a little bit of an idea at the end of uh, yesterday's run when I was... Uh, yep. Anyway. Now, yes, we'll get level of infrastructure on each province. That's perfect. We will guess... Irish economic advance attack. Yeah, we're going to rush down to the establish a financial and industrial capital. I really like Ireland's um, Kaiser Redux industry tree. It, it's so it's 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 simple, but it's good. You get you get a, a good number of events. You get a lot of you actually get a lot of industry for it. Like I think yesterday Britain had like forty six military factories, and I had eighteen, which is fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, it makes no sense, but it, it is very strong, and uh, I do like the flavor. Now, we're all going to change over to Core uh, Kosaha, yes, which is actually, as far as I'm aware, incorrectly uh, named, because Core, obviously, is a Core, and a Core is not a division. Renan Kosaha is Infantry Division, so get that, perfect. Uh, German World War One Tank Division, no, don't need that. Core, uh, core Markra, let's change that to Renan. Obviously, it's, of course, it's Irish, so everything is backwards. So, Vernon is Division Mar uh, Marcra. I assume it's Cavalry. I actually didn't look it up. Um, I was because I'm not going to be using Cavalry Divisions, apart from Garrisons, which I won't even have much of, because I won't actually be taking a lot of territory. I'll mainly just be expanding the territory of the French and the Italians. I do have a bit of a plan, though. We will, we will make this war worth our while. I'll make sure of it. I wouldn't enter a war otherwise, if it wasn't in our... If there wasn't something to begin, I was about to say if it wasn't in our best interest, but a lot of countries go to war, <laughs> it's in their best interest, and then they lose. Now, that is fine. What's funny here is that, uh, like, this has the infantry, like, sim you, know, you know, the helmet, the infantry template symbol, but I can't find it here anywhere. I don't know where all the regular templates are. Or where all the regular icons are. I have no idea where they've gone. And the, uh, the... 
the new division icons or whatever that mod is called is severely outdated and you think it wouldn't matter much because it's just you know it's just an aesthetic mod but apparently it does and it does not work anymore to be fair i, I probably could have looked for a more up-to-date version but i did not that's fine though i think we will just we yeah so here's the plan like i was saying I build a lot of infantry, a lot of infantry and artillery, maybe build an air force to support it, but in general I don't do too much with tanks. Now the Molotov series, last series, was a, was an exception. I think I had a, a 24 tank divisions under Konyev, and I think I pumped out another 24 there at the end. I built heavy tanks, which is rare for me. But we will be building tanks in this game. In fact, we will be almost exclusively using tanks. I am going to leave, and I'll just quickly do this. Uh, we will get, uh, we'll get Liam Lynch. And we'll get... Did we get Tom Barry? Yeah, we're going to get Tom Barry. Uh, we're going to... Not fall back. I'm going to... Area defense. Do all of this. Yes, please. So, as you can see, we need 20 divisions to guard... Or at least 20 units to guard every single tile in Ireland. Which is not too bad. I think I could have sworn it was more. I could have sworn it used to be 27 or something like that. Maybe I'm going crazy. Could have, could have sworn it used to be 27. Maybe that's a different mod or base game or whatever. Probably likely not base game to be fair. Actually, Ireland's uh, Ireland doesn't have nearly as many of these VPs in the base game. But um, so yes, we need twenty divisions, and I, I want to garrison every single tile because in the first run, things things weren't great when I only left behind like a token force on the ports. Like we, I don't know how many battles we fought. We had Ukrainians swarming Cork. There was a lot of who else was there? Was it Greek? No. I don't think, maybe it was Greeks. I think it was Greeks and, and Ukrainians just like swarming our territory. And don't, don't get me wrong, we didn't we didn't capitulate. We almost did, but we didn't. A lot of Bulgarians too, actually. Um, but they were swarming our territory, and we had to keep bringing back forces from the continent to drive them out. It was just a pain in the ass. So we're going to garrison every single tile so that there's at least some resistance everywhere, and we can ship forces up and you know shuttle them up and down the country as needed. So we're going to guard with twenty infantry units, and then. The rest of our army will literally just be tank divisions on the continent. That's it. And, and we're, I don't think we're going to have the industry for an air force. Uh, and we, we've got two uh, na naval dockyards, so we're literally just going to build convoys. Because I'm sure plenty of ours will be getting sunk. And yeah, so yeah, that's our plan to have an elite Irish expeditionary force. A full tank army, nine divisions, on the continent just as an elite armoured vanguard of, interna of international syndicalism, or totalism in our case. Just kind of elite force, small force, heavily armed and armoured. Uh, not, not, not too fast, to be honest. Uh, because these will be big tanks. Funnily enough, we, we won't actually be building heavies, but uh, the mediums that we build will be pretty damn slow. Uh, now, yes, we're obviously going to trade with the British. Because we have multiple uh, proposals for them that we want them to accept. I also have a, uh, a colorize your country mod. Because as soon as we go totalist and we do like the Ruby Isle focus, or maybe just as soon as we go, uh, as soon as we go totalist, I'm not decided yet. I want to actually become red, like on the map, because it makes no sense to be called the Ruby Isle and you're still green. <laughs> you know. So I've got a nice uh, colorize your country map uh, map mod there. Yes. Now 18 pounder guns. 80, I think that's the uh, 18 pound like 18 pound 18 pounds is the weight of the shell and then the actual caliber of the gun I'm not sure what it is in inches but it's like uh, 84 millimeter it's it's the 84 millimeter gun standard British World War one gun basically 84 millimeters that's 8.4 centimeters uh, 7.5 centimeters would be three inches so some, yeah, like 3.3 inch gun, something like that. I don't know. Um, watch my cause. 100, a 100 millimeter gun would be a 4 inch gun. 75 is 3 inches, so it's somewhere there in the middle. Oh. That is fine. Off we go. We have the steel. Do I have to start importing that? Yeah, there we go. That's better. Uh, we have 38,000 men, which is, is fairly historical for the Irish army of the time period. Uh, though, of course, we got 67,000 men um, ready to be called up, which is absolutely fantastic. So we're going to immediately put them into training. Like I said, we're going to need 20 units. So that's what we are going to get. Yes, uh, I'm not going to play around with, with the naval stuff too much. Maybe in the future, I might do an Ireland run. Uh, it can't be James Moulton or Brian, because I need to conquer Britain in that run. 
uh, can't be Fine Gael, the Fine Gael Collins run, because that's just staying peaceful and making lots of money. Yes, some mod. Maybe is Italy. Actually, yeah, maybe is Italy. Maybe is Italy to 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 uh, seek vengeance for the the Kaiser Redux Balbo campaign where I had a really nice navy, but I didn't get to finish it. Something like that. Either way, we'll play some country in Kaiser Redux and we'll have good fun with the navy, but not in this run because we don't have the industry for navy because we are focusing on the tanks now. I think that about covers it. The music is incredibly loud, and I'm doing my utmost to turn it down without muting it. Kind of failing it in that regard. Might actually get the uh, different song, different uh, playlist. Yeah, I think I don't think this one is as loud. Now check the recording. All is well. Fantastic. So I think that is that about it. I'll just uh, we don't have much of a navy. Just. Uh, six destroyers. I do actually have a navy mod installed as well. If you remember from the Black Ice series, uh, the Black Ice series and Black Ice, they all have, all the ships have like different colors. So like the, the destroyers here are blue. That's, that's a nice handy uh, little mod that I have installed. I mean, these are all named after battles that uh, Irish forces of various states participated in. Most, most of these ships are named after victories, except for Clonmel, which was a siege, which we lost. Um, Yellow Ford is uh, the most prominent here. We did actually win that one. We won the we won the rest of these as well. Um, just not Clan Melt, yeah. No, actually, I'm not sure about Ben Burb either. I think I'm pretty sure we won Ben Burb. I think it's just Clan Melt, yeah. Now, you're going to train up. I also want you to automatic split off, yeah. Pop these two dockyards on to repair. You know, we don't have an air force of any description. That's fine. We're on limited conscription. What else is there limited of No, I think... Yes, now time to uh, actually do some reading. This is, after all, the introductory reading and lore episode. Now, Michael Collins, waning his uh, waning heroic uh, personality. While Collins has managed to coast quite comfortably on his popularity ever since he was swept into power in 1921, Collins has been gradually losing his sway over the Irish people. After more than a decade, many have grown tired of Collins, seeing him as nothing but an old relic kept in power only because of his status as a hero and not because of any concrete policy. With Ireland's economy worsening, Collins is going to have to prove to the populace that he still has policies to bring to the table. So, daily political power gain minus 0 0.05. Daily market liberal support minus 0 0.02. Michael Collins is the saviour national hero of Ireland with wide-scale popularity keeping him in power. Born in Cork, Collins fought in the 1916 Easter Rising and afterwards became the president of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. During the war, he organised the IRA into an effective guerrilla force seeking to avoid the mistakes of 1916 and 1921. Yeah, that, that was just a major fault of uh, of many Irish forces throughout the centuries. We're like, like we, we did use guerrilla warfare on some scale. Like There was lots of ambushes. And hit and run tactics and and so often, but we just we got ourselves into so many stand up conventional fights with the English. It's like like whose idea was this to go up against the like the larger force? You know, in many cases better in in almost all cases better trained. In many cases better led, definitely better equipped. It's like why would you get into a, a stand up fight, a conventional man to man fight with? It's such a bad idea. It's it's like even like you, you read of a. Uh, of Hugh O'Neill and Hugh O'Donnell. The war is going so well until Kinsale. And then, like Kinsale isn't even that bad. It's like it's it's it, it's not a colossal battle. It's like it's like we lose one skirmish and then that's it, we're fucked. Ugh. Yeah, very unfortunate. Anyway. It, it was bigger than a skirmish. It, it was a battle, but it wasn't, you know, a colossal battle. It, it wasn't like we were completely wiped off the you know, the wiped wiped out on the field of battle. It's just we lose one battle, that's it, it's over. Uh, da, 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 da. Where were we? In 1921, he was sent to negotiate the Anglo-Irish Treaty, although by threatening to continue the war with German backing, he was able to acquire all 32 counties in the treaty. He was unable to secure a republic, with the British fearing that an independent Irish republic would immediately become a German base. When he was expelled from Sinn Féin by Eamon de, uh, de, uh, Eamon de Valera, he managed to form his own party, Fine Gael, which quickly overtook Sinn Féin in popularity. After the British Revolution, he declared an independent Republic of Ireland and defeated a Unionist uprising in Ulster. I think I think that law is being changed in Kaiserreich. I'm not sure when that'll uh, ever be implemented. I think there's, there's a confidence in... No, confidence in supply? I think it's called confidence in supply agreement, yeah. Between the Unionists and the rest of the Republic. 
Uh, now with another war approaching, Collins advocates revitalizing Ireland's economy and military in order to assert Ireland's independence. Yes, indeed. Defense of the Republic, 10% base conflict support and division defense and attack on core territory. After 700 years of British rule, see, this, I love this. You could take like 10, 10, take 10 Irishmen, put them all in a room and ask each of them how long Ireland has been fighting against Britain for. You will get 10 different answers. It's insane. You, you might get like 300 years. 400 years and, and it'll basically go along until you get to the 10th man and he'll tell you that in the in the beginning of time God created two countries Britain and Ireland and they've been at war with each other since the start <laughs> now However, Britain and Canada still threaten Ireland if it comes to war the British people must be prepared to fight using their super Did I say that I say British people? And, and if it comes to war the Irish people must be prepared to fight using their superior knowledge of the terrain and determination to protect their freedom the Ulster issue, minus 5% stability, plus 10% resistance growth speed. The territory of Ulster has been occupied by the Republic of Ireland ever since the British fell into revolution, and while we have tried to incorporate them into Ireland proper, they have not gone quietly. The status, the status of Ulster remains contentious in the Irish political scene, and a permanent solution to the Ulster issue is needed if the Emerald Isle is to remain free from armed civil conflict. Unraveling political scene, daily political power gain, minus 0 0.05, daily political power cost, plus 0 0.05, stability minus 5%, daily syndicalist, social democrat, and social conservative support, plus 0 0.02 each. Fine Gael has enjoyed an almost unopposed hold on Ireland's democratic political system ever since the foundation of the Free Republic, but that has begun to change in recent years. Collins' old adversary Eamon de Valera has been steadily gaining more power within Ireland as the economic situation worsens under Collins' rule, and God not only knows what Eamon de Valera would do to the economy, fuck me, 30 years of autarky, yeah, no thanks. Uh, and as Fine Gael's power wanes, a violent clash between supporters of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have become more common. This swell in political violence has led to a significant increase in Sinn Féin's popularity as Cahill Brewer's ideas gain more traction with the mas uh, mashes, masses, uh, branding themselves as a peaceful third way between De Valera and Collins. Additionally, socialists of various ilks have been steadily clawing their way into political relevance, largely thanks to support from the Union of Britain and the American SPA. With all this in mind, the election of 1937 is set to be the most contentious one in recent memory, and if Fine Gael is to remain in their position of unchecked dominance, they will need to prove to the people of Ireland of their commitment to overhauling Ireland's uh, stagnant economic and political scenes in order to end the troubles once and for all. Economic troubles this time. The threat across the aisle. 5% base conflict support, 8% division defence on core territory. Many hoped the British Revolution would have, would have marked the end of British imperialism in Ireland. However, the new syndicalist government in London has largely proven to be no different from the old royalists and uh, on the matter of wanting to control Irish affairs. We once thought that imperialism was only a symptom of Britain's monarchist system, but as the syndicalists continue to continue all the old royalist tricks, we have now come to the inescapable conclusion that the desire to subjugate our Emerald Isle is simply within the Englishman's blood, leading many to be convinced that our rivalry with London will only end when Britannia has been wiped off of the face of the earth for good. Of course, this, there's a nice reference to... Call of Duty World at War here. Uh, yeah, we've had enough of your past when the Irish tricolor flies atop London. All of the world will know that the eve of the British Empire and their red offspring has been wiped from the face of the earth. Ripped straight from Call of Duty World at War. Great Reznov quote, don't get me wrong. But yes, that is what that is a reference to. Oh, I think that's about... Oh yes, uh, national liberalism. Fine Gael, market liberals, national liberalism. National liberalism defines or describes the strand of mainline liberal thought that also espouses patriotism and nationalism, either civic or ethnic in form, tied inherently to, to their notions of liberty, equality, freedom, and fraternity. Commonly more conservative or traditionalist than mainline liberalism, national liberals seek a society of order and protected freedoms, but many have been known to offer preferential treatment towards each regime's favoured citizenry. Regardless, national liberalism is a legitimate liberal ideology with roots in France, wider Europe, and their colonial possessions abroad, of which we have none and we are never going to have any we are solely focused on europe that's where we're going to put all of our effort and money into now i think that's about it i'm, I'm kind of thinking i might do away with the uh with the introductory reading and lore episode it's kind of like an unnecessary episode instead of just making it like an hour long shortening the total number of episodes in a series um perhaps if it works out that way and uh, just kind of i suppose keeping viewer engagement because there is less episodes not i think i might and like currently we're at 23 minutes that is a standard enough introductory reading and lore video but i kind of might just keep going yeah i don't plan on this being a very long series to be honest now irish economic advancement act political power plus 50 passed the ieaa and begin considering the economic direction of the nation despite gaining our freedom the economy of our fine island has laid stagnant for quite some time and is even in some places decaying with the passing of the irish economic advancement act the doll can address this uh, vital issue ireland may be small but our people are industrious and our cities have plenty of room to grow the state... Ugh! What's that? The state night cycle. That's disgusting. Do not fog a war as well. Yeah, there we are. 
Now, the State of the Year Republic, 1936, after countless years of arduous rebellion and weathering oppressive British rule, the Irish people have won their freedom and their country back. But as one enemy was vanquished, another rose in her place, perhaps yet more dangerous still. Uh, Michael Collins sits as president, eager to defend the independence of his nation at any cost, yet his political enemies as are many as the are many as the 1937 election approaches. Oh, excuse me. President Kerensky is gone, as always. Now, violence between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil is rife, while Sinn Féin, while as not popular as the other two, presents itself as a moderate alternative. Ireland is a powder keg, and it's only a matter of time until it explodes. These are turbulent times. 25 political power. I don't think you can get another civil war in Ireland in Kaiser Redux, which is crazy, because you got a lot of factions. Honestly, though, um, there's, enough, there's plenty of civil wars in, uh, in Mons. Problems up north, here he is. Edward Carson, the former leader of the Unionist Party, died last year, aged 81. He was, he was an extremely divisive figure whilst alive and fled to England when Ireland gained her independence and took back Ulster. He was particularly reviled outside of Ulster for his persecution of beloved Irish poet and author Oscar Wilde. His memory was venerated today by loyalists in the north of Ireland who held a memorial service in Belfast. Uh, uh, it says here that he fled to England when Ireland gained her independence and took, back, and took back Ulster, but did he come back when the syndicalist revolution happened? I'm not too sure. Uh, who held a memorial service in Belfast with several leading members of the UUP speaking in his name. The memorial attracted quite a crowd, showing that Carson still has power even in death. His spectre is looming over Ulster, just as the tensions and threat of rebellion loom over it as well. He's a problem even from the grave. Minus 25 political power. Edward VIII is crowned King of Great Britain. But yeah, our our league can be some can become so industrially strong in this uh, in this mod. Assuming you play your cards right. Now, yes. The doll considers the economy with the passing of the Irish Economic Advancement Act, a commitment by the Irish government to a rapid and complete overhaul of the economy has been made, as stipulated in the act. Oh, here comes Black Monday. As stipulated in the Act, the government must now decide on an annual focus to improve the economy. Michael Collins, President of the Republic and Leader of Fine Gael, as well as Frank McDermott of the National Centre Party, believe that Ireland should focus on building up its industry as quickly as possible. A syndicalist coalition led by Jim Larkin, Big Jim, argues that giving power to the workers' unions is the best way to increase our nation's productivity. Lastly, Sinn Féin suggests a focus on mainstream industrial research and development. So, Reilly's elected in France, that's good. We're going to need some allies. We're going to need some beefy allies, not fucking Annie Kenny, or I don't know. Anyone other than Marcel Deas, George Valois, or uh, or Jacques Doriot. You know, we need some fucking allies. We need some total war commies to, to, to beat the Germans. We're not, not going to do it with, you know, fucking trade unions and, you know, freedom. Anyway, uh, th I think, though, to be fair, we are going to be, like, the least extreme of the three here. I'm not sure. I, I didn't set the Italians to go to go anything, so they, they, they might actually be, end up being the most free. Anyway... So we have Collins in the NCP have the right idea, 50 political power, 2.5% mark lib support, 5% military factory and civilian factory construction speed, Democrats and Liberals, you know, the syndicalists are onto something, minus 25 political power, 2.5% rad sock syndicalists and total support, and we get fo uh, focus on workers' rights, 5% production efficiency cap, and factory, oh, but that's going to be especially nice once we uh, actually get enough factories, we only have two at the moment, but we ought to start small. Out uh, industry for Ireland. Begin industrializing in Ireland. Our civilian industry has an enormous potential for growth. There is a major unemployment problem in our nation. With many families too poor to regularly feed themselves, by revitalizing our industry, we can both create new jobs and improve the economic strength of our nation. Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy. Now, Shadow of James Connolly. Of the many groups which took part in the Easter Rising and the struggle for Irish independence, few were more involved in the Irish Citizen Army and the Irish Labour Party, and their role was really diminished uh, under de Valera's government in our own timeline. A hugely influential movement in their own right, the Labour Party was torn apart by infighting shortly after Ireland gained independence. In a great irony, the British Revolution, which ultimately freed Ireland from its chains, proved to be an almost fatal blow to public controllism on the Emerald Isle. As the Red Ideal, so fluidly exposed uh, uh, by the Labour Party, came to be unacceptable to the wider population, once it became clear that the Union of Britain was no different than its, royal, than its royalist predecessor, Britain's lingering influence has made the greater Irish public view uh, socialism as nothing, more, as nothing more than another tool of British oppression ultimately leading to a rapid decline in the popularity of the Labour Party. As a result, the role of Connolly in the ICA and the Easter Rising Irish independence have been downplayed by the Collins government, who shares the opinion that a socialist Ireland would no doubt to generate into a British puppet state. The two titans of the party which arose following Connolly's execution, James Larkin and William X. O'Brien, 
faced a bitter rivalry, especially in regards to the newly founded Union of Britain. Larkin, ever the revolutionary, favoured at sticking by the Union of Britain, who supported Larkin's efforts at every turn. Whether Larkin's alliance with the British Reds was out of pragmatism or true loyalty to London is a topic for debate, as despite their contacts with London, the Irish socialists continue to espouse Irish nationalism and resistance against Britain. However, with the focus turned to the Royalists in Canada, O'Brien, who stood in firm opposition to the British, refused any aid or comfort from London's government, viewing the new syndicalist government as nothing more than the continuation of the United Kingdom that preceded it just with a new coat of paint. The flip-flopping of the party... Remind me of the, of the syndicalist flag again. Yeah, it's, it's an odd one. It's an odd one. The flip-flopping of the party on the issue of the Union of Britain ultimately, fl uh, ultimately led to its death, with James Larkin splitting from the Labour Party to form the Irish Workers' League, taking a large portion of the party with him. With the Labour Party losing a large share of its voter and support base to Larkin, the party ultimately withered as the party collapsed the core of the party, including some of their most influential, mem uh, influential members, such as Thomas Johnson and William Norton, jumped ship to Sinn Féin, which ultimately drifted to the left as a result. The collapse of the Labour Party, one of the few Irish political parties that did not exist as the as an internal faction of Sinn Féin, was ironically uh, was ironically the saving grace of the party, which was at death's door following humiliating defeats in the previous election. When the Labour, with the Labour Party confined to irrelevance, the Irish left has been split between a reinvigorated Sinn Féin and Larkin's semi-legal Irish Workers' League, whose support from the Union of Britain has been anything but subtle. Socialism in Ireland, not under the big fellow's watch. We're going to have to get rid of that watch. 3% syndicalist and social democrat support. Black Monday hits Ireland. On the 3rd of February, the German stock market collapsed, plunging the world into depression. Ireland has relied on trade with Germany and its sphere of influence since the British, British Revolution when we declared ourselves our public and cut ties with the British Empire. The crisis has, been, has had a severe effect on the Irish economy as Germany and our other European trading partners have been hit by the crisis. Many scramble to find solutions, most, par most parties proposing either Irish economic development or maintaining stability while the German economy recovers. More radically, the Anglophile National Centre Party advocate abandoning trade with continental Europe and opening ties with the Entente after making speeches tinged with anti-German rhetoric. The syndicalists have also begun to advocate revolution, claiming that this crisis is proof of the failures of capitalism. This could be bad. Well, it could be. Maybe. We're not sure. Political power at minus 150 and Black Monday, which grants 45% consumer goods factories factor, minus 20% construction speed, minus 20% production efficiency cap, minus 20% factory output. Okay, so so bear in mind now we got Black Monday, March the thirty sixth. Let's see how long it takes us to get rid of to get rid of it. It, it, it not long at all. Now the IFI initiative, the government has have ordered that extensive funds be made available for the rapid re-industrialization uh, of our nation. Too many Irish men and women are without jobs. Many British-owned factories were closed down when Ireland gained her independence and have since fallen into disrepair. Ireland's industry lacks any real focus or direction despite the population being eager and ready to work. It is up to the government to decide just how much of an investment into the civilian industry they wish to make. So we have a normal amount, get the country back on our feet. We get 25 political power from that and we will have the option to build several industrial projects in Ireland over time. We have a significant amount, we need to be able to compete. Again, we, we lose the 25 political power but we still get several. Or, a major amount, Ireland can rise to greatness. Minus 25 political power, it, it, it still says several industrial projects but clearly it's just more. Now, revitalize the North. Ulster gets one building slot and one civilian factory. We get the Harland and Wolf Shipyard event as well as the Short Brothers Company. After the 1925 ceasefire, the northernmost region of Ulster has been in an industrial slump relative to the rest of the nation. Belfast once used to be a thriving industrial city, and other towns and cities such as Derry and Coleraine were looking likely to follow. Revisiting this issue and energizing the North with industrial investments will help to lift the region. I think the. Uh, the only surviving ship of the, the only surviving British ship of the Battle of Jutland is actually docked in Belfast. All the, I think all the red, obviously, obviously the ones that were destroyed in the battle are, are still at the bottom of the ocean. But um, I think all the other German and British ships of that battle were, are either have either been scrapped or they've been destroyed or so on and so forth. I think the last surviving ship is in Belfast. I read that somewhere. Now, that's capital computing. Corn Love Storms Moscow. First International Congress, Oswald Mosley elected, thank God. 20th anniversary of the 1916 Easter Rising. I'm only going to be reading this event once because uh, 
uh, it's the same every time. On Monday, the 24th of April 1916, members of the Irish Volunteers, Irish Citizen Army and Common Demon seized key locations in Dublin and declared a free Irish Republic, surrounded by the vastly superior numbers in artillery of the British Army. They fought on for six days before eventually surrendering, although, uh, sorry, most of the leaders of the Rising were executed, although, alas, at the time, it would subsequently lead to Ireland's War of Independence and Freedom after 700 years under British rule. Today is the 20th anniversary and celebrations and parades have taken place all across Ireland, including a thundering speech from President Collins, emphasising the need to protect the freedom that Patrick Pierce and his comrades died for for slavery fled or glorious dead when you fell in the foggy dew how many ports do we have is it one two three yeah it's four that's fine perfect ships are all trained up six destroyers are small but fuck it they'll do now those who still fight i do like i do like this event quite a lot as every year on the 24th of April, the Irish people gathered together as one to celebrate and mourn the Rising in 1916. Despite having been a nominally a nominal failure, it was the Rising that gave birth to Free Ireland and all but Ulster view the day with great reverence. This year being the 20th anniversary of the Rising was home to much more grand festivalness than usual. This being the case, very few took note of the posting all around Ireland of a proclamation by a group claiming to be the Executive Council of the Second Doll. Chaired by Sean O'Callaghan, himself an elected member of Ireland's Second Doll, the group transferred their legitimate authority to what they call the Army Council of the Irish Republican Army, as was their right as per a resolution based on the, uh, as per a resolution based by the first doll. Of course, when the day was done, people did finally start to take note of such a strange proclamation. Nothing was expected to come of such an odd occurrence. However, with just a few weeks past its posting, the, uh, past its posting, the Army Council has issued an ultimatum to our government, which they still consider to be the Free State. Acting less as an ultimatum and more like a manifesto, the document sent in an unmarked letter details in brief the legitimacy of the Army Council, explains their aims and fully concludes and finally concludes with demands. The Army Council explains their uh, their legitimacy by stating that they represent the final remnants of the Irish Republic proclaimed in 1916. They claim that they can trace their legacy to the IRA's splitting upon the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty, with those against the treaty carrying on the fight even when Collins declared an end to the Free State upon the British Revolution. As for the so-called Executive Council, they are made up of members of the Second Doll, and with the Second Doll never formally dissolving itself, they claim to carry on its mission. The Army Council's goals are simple, the complete abolishing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty and everything associated with it, and the re-establishment of the True Republic of 16. Despite these quite grandiose claims, the IRA, even with the support of the Executive Council, are quite fringe, although this position did once share some popularity, mostly among Sinn Féin. With a 32-county Ireland finally free, however, almost all popular support dried up. Even Sinn Féin uh, dropped their support in its most recent Ardfesh, although this did cause a split in the party, wherein Sean O'Callaghan, pr uh, party president, along with a few others left in defiance. Due to its almost non-existent popular support, a majority of those within the government believe that such an ultimatum will lead nowhere and suggest that our current measures are more than enough. However, a few believe that we should ramp up anti-terrorism measures before more civilians get hurt or worse. A very small minority actually believe we should sit down and work out some kind of deal. After all, if we can become the true republic, there will be nothing, nothing left to fight for. Either way, Collins is expected to make a decision soon, lest the already tense situation get even worse. So we have these fools no threat, continue our current measures, 25 to the power minus 5% base stability. The IRA has outlived itself, end this foolish rebellion, minus 45 to the power 15% base stability. Or, perhaps something is to be gained from peace, arrange a meeting with this army council, 15 political power, 2% base stability. We will do that. I think this is worth do, doing it every time. Maybe there's some paths where, where you where you can't, where you shouldn't do this if, if you want to get the path that you're actually going for. But I think it's, it's worth it to do this every time. Now, National Industri Industrial Investment Fund, 2.5% civilian factory construction speed. Constructing and expanding our nation's industry is vital if Ireland is to play any sort of key role on the world stage in the future. We need to make funds available to finance our rapid industrialization project. This will allow us more room for expansion and more efficient construction, depending on how much funds we make available. This machine tool is good. Now, a deal for the Republic. After a long and tense series of meetings between the Army Council of the IRA and the government of President Collins, the two sides have released a joint statement officially announcing that 
that they have come to an agreement. The agreement, officially called the Belfast Agreement due to the meetings taking place in Ulster's capital, in essence answers every objection that the Army Council had against the Republican government. First and foremost, the Republic of Ireland declared by President Collins using the machinery of the Free State and considered by the IRA to, in nature still be the Free State, shall be completely dissolved. In its place, the Irish Republic declared in 1916 and continued on by the IRA shall be given control of Ireland. Secondly, the Anglo-Irish Treaty, itself already discarded and all but named by the Republic, shall be declared null and void. Thirdly, a caretaker government headed by Collins as a show of goodwill but made up of members of the Army Council along with the Quorum of the Dáil shall rule over the Republic until the 1937 elections. Fourthly, the Shannon Aaron shall be temporarily dissolved. Polish military seizes control. Shall be temporarily dissolved. However, the body shall reform following the up and coming 1937 elections. Fifthly, every law passed by the various dolls of the Free State shall be adopted by the Irish Republic. Although following the 1937 elections, the doll shall be the third to, co to coincide with the second finally closing. Finally, the IRA and our own defence forces shall be merged and the leadership of both shall combine. While in effect, very little will truly change in the minds of these legitimists. Ireland shall be under its rightful government. Even despite this, the agreement has yet to be ratified by the doll. Uh, as many view it as a needless and a worthless change to win over such a small amount of the population as the debate within the Irish Parliament comes to a close it appears that the agreement has been ratified as it may be the only way for a lasting peace the Republic of Ireland will be known as the Public Naharan and Maurice Toomey becomes a general or the agreement has failed ratification and counter-terrorist activities have resumed minus 45 political power 50% base ability no no it's been ratified and here we are Public Naharan Republic of Ireland in Irish Though, though, in our own timeline, um, the official name of the country of, you know, the, uh, of non-British Ireland is, is just Ireland, but we often call ourselves, and are called the Republic of Ireland, just to distinguish between ourselves and Northern Ireland. Now, see, yeah, see, this is the real reason why I like doing this. We get four free units and 36,000 men, and they're all the veterans, too. I really like that. Immediately convert them over to the renowned Kossaha. Now we already have 74,000 men in the army. Lovely. Now see, yeah, this is perfect because Liam Lynch already has defensive doctrine. We will, we will also get you charismatic for that division recovery. Tom Barry. I think, I'm thinking camouflage expert in case the enemy tries to attack, uh, tries to naval invade with Cass, which, see, which seems unlikely, but you never know. So camouflage expert makes perfect sense when we're on the defensive. Now, the Serstadt Alcohol Factories. Following the commencement of the IFI initiative, the Irish Department of Industry and Commerce have decided on perhaps a rather obvious choice to kick starting Ireland's industry. Alcohol, the greatness. I, just, I can't get over the... Uh, the what was it? Family Guy or Futurama? I think it was Family Guy. It's like, it's Family Guy. And it's like Ireland like 2,000 years ago. And there's like flying cars everywhere and everything's super technological. I think it might have been Futurama. Or maybe it was, it was, I can't remember. Either way, and, uh, or, like, Ireland's top scientists are meeting to, to, to convert the entire population into pure cosmic energy. And then some guy walks in saying that Michael McLeod has invented a new beverage and it's whiskey and they all drink it and they all start beating the shit out of each other. But that, that is kind of historical, though. Ireland didn't invent anything for 300 years after whiskey. Which is, uh, sad. Obviously, there was other things going on, but it is a true statement. Now, Ireland has a long and proud tradition of producing Irish whiskey, but much of the production is done in small family-run distilleries throughout the countryside. The proposed Sarah Stott development will open up several alcohol factories and produce some much-needed much needed employment for our nation, but the location for the development has yet to be decided, only that it should be in one of our less industrial developed regions. So we have Ulster. God knows if anyone needs a drink, it's them. We have Connacht. They need the jobs there. Or Munster. They'll benefit the most from the profit. Well, let's have a look at our industry. How are we doing? Ulster has got three civilian factories. Leinster has got four and one military factory. Ulster has got a military factory, two civvies and two dockyards. And Connacht has literally fuck all. Connacht, they need the jobs there. I should note that alcohol is uh, definitely one of the main destroyers of Irish families and families in general. But because this is a video game, I am going to do it. Connacht, they need the jobs there. And I, I think I'm just going to pretend as well that... Uh, that we're not consuming the alcohol domestically. Instead, we're sending it abroad to like plutocratic, oligarch, oligarchy, kleptocrat. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I remember seeing this in the Kojano series, actually, in, in parts of Ukraine. Ah, oh, shit. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're, we're sending it abroad to the capitalist nations to keep them wallowing in vice and stupor. 
We, of course, are most definitely not drinking Irish whiskey ourselves. No, we would not do that. End of the Republic of Ireland uh, today from atop Aris on Uchtaran. President Michael Collins declared that the Republic of Ireland has been formally dissolved. Far from being a coup or a revolution, the Republic dissolving comes as a result of the Belfast Agreement, a treaty between Collins' government and a remnant of the Irish Republican Army. In the agreement, the Republic of Ireland was to be formally dissolved, replaced by the original Irish Republic declared in 1916 during the Easter Rising, while the IRA claimed to be the legitimate, which the IRA claimed to be the legitimate heirs of. The newly re-established Irish Republic has been given a caretaker government made up of the members of the IRA Army Council, who decided to allow Collins to remain president. Oh yeah, they decided. At least until the 1937 Irish elections. Exactly what is going to change in Ireland as a result of the Belfast Agreement remains to be seen. Erin Gilbra. Back to the UBD, that's good. Oh, Turner Marty elected, that's bad. Perhaps the UBD is, uh, UBD is good, though, means Russia should hopefully be able to get the Estonians and Latvians for free. Delhi wins the fourth Anglo-Afghan war, though uh, Afghanistan is still independent. I've seen, I've seen one ending where it's like total Anglo victory, total Afghani death, and Afghanistan becomes a dominion and joins the Entente. And the reunification of Sinn Féin. With the ratification of the Belfast Agreement and the re-establishing of Irish Republic across all 32 counties, the, fract uh, the fractured Sinn Féin party has formally reunited itself. As part of the reunion, the break-off led by Sean uh, Ukalig has formally dropped its process of abstentionism. While the process was mainly painless, the exact details of the reunification are a bit puzzling. Both parts of the party, in their statements of reunion, welcome the other half back into the fold. The reason for this strange wording is due to the fact that they both claim to be the true Sinn Féin party. Regardless of this strange wording, with the two halves reunited, Sinn Féin is bigger and stronger than ever. The legacy of Griffith lives on, it seems. 10% Social Democrat support, putting them on. Whew, significant 28. Look at the Reds here. No, Sinn Féin's not really Reds, but you know what I mean. Uh, 415, 528. Damn, they are looking beefy. Now, establish a financial and industrial capital, create an international business centre in Dublin. The rise of syndicalism in Britain has created a void in the British Isles that Ireland could potentially fill. Non-syndicalist nations could look to Ireland as a lead trade nation, situated in the Atlantic between the American and European continents. With some effort and plenty of foreign lobbying, Dublin could be the next London. Yeah. No. Oh, wait, never mind. Then it clears total victory in Afghanistan. The, the Dominion is here. It's Dover Chuds. Now, the National Industrial Investment Fund, the government's decision to orchestrate the creation of a national fund for investing in Irish industry, has been well received by the public. Recent economic developments in the nation have been seen as an encouraging sign that the doll is committed to completing Ireland's economic rebirth. The creation of the NIIF will allow for the development of specialised construction companies and facilitate the purchase of building materials to keep the wheels of industrialization turning. So we can say we've spent enough on this issue as it is, 25 kilo power, so spend no more or massively invest in the fund and get those factories built. Usually there's, be, there's like a middle option, that's odd. Yes, we're going to massively invest minus 40 political power and we will get the massive National Industrial Investment Fund. I'm going to just check the description differences. National Industrial Investment Fund. The investments made into this fund are specially designated to the acquisition of building materials and expert construction teams to, to more quickly build up our, our civilian industries. So then we'll get this. The massive amount of the the massive amount of the investment made by uh, by the Irish government into the development of our national industry ensures that we were able to build civilian factories at a much faster speed than we otherwise could. Lovely. I don't think I'm going to be building many civvies, I'll be honest. Well, I mean, we, we like Dublin could become the next London if we weren't going to go a syndicalist, you know, totalist rather. The pints are calling the construction of the Serstadt, which means free state, alcohol factories has finished, and now the nation can enjoy the benefits. No, 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 we can't. No, we're we're, we're exporting all of it to to the capitalists. The factories have not come without their expense, but there's no doubt that they'll be good for public morale. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure the beaten wives and children will appreciate it, as well as the economy in the long term. Can we really afford this pullout? 25 political power or slauncher, minus 40 political power, Connacht, three building slots and three civilian factories. Yes. That of TG Masaryk, uh, that's Rodola Gada's opponent. 
The Harland and Wolf Shipyard during the early 1900s, the Harland and Wolf Shipyard in Belfast had the prestigious honour of being the world's largest shipyard. After the capitulation of the British Empire during the Weltkrieg and their second capitulation not long after the trade unionists, it has fallen into disrepair and has been overtaken by other yards throughout the world. With refurbishment, it could once again be a great asset, but this time for Ireland, not the British imperialists. So we have this is too expensive, the shipyard can rust, which is very sad. And it's a tragedy, tragic shame. Or we will, we will make this shipyard the envy of the world once more. Yes, we will. Harland and Wolf Shipyard, minus 5% production cost for carriers, capital ships, screens, submarines, and convoys. So, basically everything. Um, political power, minus 50, and also gets three building slots and three naval dockyards. More than doubling our uh, naval industry. Lovely. More convoys for exporting Irish goods. Yes, sir. The yes S-Plan. Today, during a routine meeting of President Collins and his cabinet made up of the former IRA Army Council, among the more mundane matters was a proposed plan by Sean Russell, who, who, who tried to do the exact same thing in our own time, and it really, really didn't work out well. Minister of the Interior. Once the IRA's quartermaster's, uh, quartermaster general, Russell was considered by many to be one of the most radical leaders in the IRA. Indeed, the plan proposed by Russell seems to confirm this colleague, the sabotage plan, or S-Plan for short. The plan calls for the smuggling of Irish agents and various explosive devices into the Union of Britain to be used against economic, military, and civilian targets. The brainchild of Seamus O'Donovan and Russell, the plan, if approved, would aim to create chaos within Britain, both to dissuade them from invading Ireland, to soften them up for a counter-invasion. Irish agents, with the tacit support of the government, would integrate themselves... That's the ingratiate. No, integrate, yeah. So, yeah. So, we just got Black Monday, March 36. It's already gone July 36. That, my friends, is the power of Collins um, Collins Anomics. That's a rough one to say. Mike, Michael Omics, yeah. After a long time, yeah, three months, it's, it's rough. And I went to the economic and, and diplomatic actions of... Oh, well, March, April, yeah, four. And diplomatic actions of our government, the Irish economy, has finally recovered from Black Monday. It's over already, bros. We're that strong. 50 plus power, Black Monday's gone already. Lovely. Now, where was I? Integrate themselves into British society. Uh, scout out the best targets from bombings and ex execute those attacks. Without question, the plan is radical and would no doubt ruin any chance we have for reconciling with the Union, if such was a wish of the government. Beyond that, the amount of potential deaths, be them civilian or otherwise, could be quite significant. Uh, yet there is indeed an amount of logic of logic behind the campaign. By saving, by having chaos at home, Britain would have to uh, would have a harder time maintaining any operations against us, as resources would need to be spent to maintain order. Either way, with the doll dissolved until the thirty-seven elections, the pr the choice is President Collins's alone to make. So we have approved the plan. We shall humble we shall humble perfidious Albion. Minus seventy-five political power. Add the S plan. Intelligence gained from officers and infiltrated assets plus ten percent. Operative slots plus four, which is crazy. Intel network strength gain plus 0 0.02. Oh, no, sorry, so just plus 0.2. Operational risk minus 25%. Create an intelligence agency. The Union of Britain gets, gains bombings on British soil. Foreign subversive activities efficiency plus 20%. Counterintelligence minus 0.15. Intelligence gained from operatives and infiltrated assets plus 10%. Enemy operative capture chance minus 10% for 250 days. No, obviously, we're not going to go for this because we're going totalist and joining the international. We will not stoop to Britain's level to reject this plan. 2% base stability, yes. Also, like, it, like, it, if if a country was, was like bomb was infiltrating and bombing your country, the first thing you're gonna do is invade the country. So I don't like that. I don't like that plan in general. That isn't that the second time the Kingdom of Finland has fallen. Hmm. Now I think I'm going to improve relations with the British. Which I think is actually going to immediately cancel once I get the next event. Okay, I can't hurt. Mau Mau, the Jackals of Kenya. I don't know why this appears as an event rather than like a world news event. It's odd. Now promote Dublin, our rapid industrialization and economic reforms have created an attractive environment for foreign business. If we play our cards right and offer substantial subsidies, we can attract foreign powers to establish businesses in Dublin, turning it into a new centre of trade situated in the adva advantageous Atlantic. With London having fallen, to the, having fallen to the syndicalists, now is our chance to pick up the slack and make it work for us. We need to decide how much funds we'd like to commit to our project, the larger an investment, the wider our international reach will be. But as always, the spectre of the debt lurks over us. It does, it does. I'm going to pop a save here. 
wish there was a mod that this allowed you to, uh, like, make sure this this checked every time. Make sure you got the best results every time. Spread the message loud and spread it wide. Dublin is open for foreign business. We're going to talk to the Germans, the Spanish, the Italians. The Republic of Italy, funnily enough. Not, not the Two Sicilies. It used to be the Two Sicilies. They're dockyards, I believe. That's odd. Um, the Dutch, the Americans, the Canadians, the British, the French, the Swedes, and the Austrians. I could have sworn it used to be the, the Canadians as well. That's odd. Yeah, we're going to go for that. And our improved relations with Britain is immediately going to be cancelled. Yeah, there we are. Explosion on the Dnieper. Yeah, it's minus three months, so, so it, it, it is definitely worth it. Edward Bennett elected governor of Bohemia. There he is. Oh, what, the faction, the faction's called Austro-Hungarian Empire? Is it not called Dano Adriabund right off the bat? That's odd. I don't know that. Maybe it's called Dano Adriabund if they, uh, if they reform the faction or something like that. Now... Reforming the armed forces since the end of the Northern Campaign, the Irish military has fallen into stagnation and suffered from downsizing as the Union of Britain and Canada appear less threatening. As international tensions are growing, the military must be revitalised. Plus 50 political power. That's good. We'll go back to military industry. I think I'll improve relations with the... Should I go back to the British or should I... Yeah, I'll go, I'll go back to the British. I'll keep going with the British. Military industry, 20 political power. Lancaster gets one building slot and one military factory, as does Munster. Whilst the people of Ireland would prefer peace to war, there is no doubt that war may very well be on the horizon. With an enemy across the Irish Sea and more still waiting in the wings, Ireland must build her military industry if she hopes to survive the coming storm. Oh, I think they stayed syndicalist. Oh god, they went sock dams. That's very bad. Germans reply, our attempt at footing with German businesses has been a success. The renowned Krupp armaments manufacturers announced that the construction of a new Dublin subsidiary. This is bound to create a significant amount of new jobs, and the military complex will be selling directly to the Irish government. A win-win, as they say, fantastic. 25 total power, a building stock, and a military factory. Cannot go wrong. The Wolves of Ireland. Before Ireland's transformation into a massive network of farmlands and pastures as English and continental conceptions of civilization spread to take over our Gaelic paradise. Yeah, 99% forestry, real paradise. I think I, I think I like the farms more, to be honest. I like food. Our isle, our isle was home to some of the largest wild wolf populations left in Europe. However, these wild yet majestic and noble beasts were largely hunted to extinction, uh, to extinction in our regions by farmers defending their fields and herds. And thanks to British colonization and laws, the last wild Irish wolf was shot dead in Carlow in 1786 bringing their concept of civilized society to our land, but at a deep price that cost us the liveliness of our ancient wilderness. Without forethought of the ecological ramifications of such an act, we Irish have gone about our business as a new crisis built under the surface in the wolf's absence. Ah, oh, the Spanish said no. Shame. Now, the, 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 yeah, the deer man said, yeah, but you can eat deer. You can eat wolf as well, but deer is nicer. Though our issue is not as bad as it currently is in our neighbour Scotland, we still face a deer overpopulation crisis that has threatened to tip the balance of our verdant ecosystem and send it hurtling into collapse. What do you mean deer overpopulation? This is good news. Plenty of venison on the table. To rectify this issue, many ecologists and leading natural scientists, along with their influential sponsors in the IRA and other nationalist groups like, uh, I think that should be Sayer Era, not Sayo Era, because Sayo isn't a word, but yeah, Free Ireland Sayer Era. Sinn Féin and the Alterian Hesheriga have pushed up the reintroduction of a wild wolf population on the isle to control the deer population naturally, with the wolf reintroduction plan to be uh, paired with supplementary feeding stations, artificial burrows for use as dens, the usage of patrolling guard dogs at the borders of farmlands, along with livestock protective systems like uh, Fladry, I'm not sure what Fladry is, and electrified fences. And did they have electrified fences in 1936, Ireland? Maybe, maybe. Um... And much more in an ecologically sound plan based on similar American efforts to revitalize and renaturalize the ecosystem of their Yellowstone National Park. If successful, their plan the plan should limit predation on livestock to lower levels than, than before, while allowing our ecosystem to bounce back and re-equalize following the decline in the overpopulated deer population. Although the population of these wolves uh, would be closely monitored, and although the wider plan is likely to succeed, this proposition has enraged Ireland's farmer class. Yeah, who wish to handle the issue themselves with rifles and hands. It's the best way. Still vengeful of the many herds, uh, many herds lost of wolf attacks in the distant past, and now further enraged by the meddling of conservative agrarian groups like the National Centre Party. 
Fianna Fáil and the Blue Shirts are jumping on the train to defend them in order to secure more public support. It's turning this simple ecological issue into a left versus right political debate overnight. It's not though, because we've got the uh, we've got the Social Democrats and the rad radical socialists and the National Populists on the same team, so it's, it's not not a left right thing. It's more like a who's in power versus who isn't in power thing. Um, where was I? Well, the situation with the situation getting out of hand fast, it is up to our government to finally put the matter to rest. So, what shall we do? Are you mad? We shall deal with the overpopulation issue ourselves. 8% SOC Lib support, 8% SOC Con support, 8% Pat Ott support, and 10% base stability. Or release the hounds. Ireland's forest shall run wild and free once more. 8% Rad SOC, SOC Dem, and Nat Pop support, and two off map civilian factories. Okay, so here's the thing we're humans, right? We're on the top of the food chain, we're top dogs. And as god's children we should generally try and take care of uh you know the, the planet the environment the wilderness so on and so forth so in that sense it makes sense it makes uh in that in that sense it makes sense for the reintroduction of the, like the wolf population you know keeping things natural kind of a thing but at the same time if wolves were top dogs they wouldn't reintroduce us they're wolves you know and like, like they're eating our sheep they're eating our cows our pigs like, like, they're doing all of that shit. Like, they are threats. We should kill them all. At the same time, we got to be caretakers of... Of God's lush, verdant Ireland. So, ah, it's difficult. Uh, obviously, this one makes sense because, you know, in the context of this run, because it helps the left and, you know, we're going totalist. And it, and it gets us two off maps of million factories. I don't, I don't know what I'd do in our own timeline. In, in real life, rather. It's just like they're wolves, you know, they're predators. They they eat the things that we eat. Like, we can eat the wolves too, but they're not as tasty. And they're a hell of a lot harder to bring down. Oh, man, I'm kind of... But then, then the whole caretaker thing. Ah. We're going to release the hounds, yes. Makes sense in the context of this playthrough. Yes, get me... I'll give me up to five mils. Fantastic. Basic arm protection, good, we will need that. Let's get basic engines. That is significantly out of time. 1934 medium, but it's 36, but it's still somehow 1.23 years ahead of time. So is that really a 1937 medium? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, what else is there? Yeah, radios. The town's reply, fantastic, a naval dockyard. Lovely. 25 little power in Leinster. Now on Tarum. Or on Tarum. You will be giving me more resources. We do actually do have a lot of political power right now. That's good. I'm going to improve relations with the French. Hopefully it's not too late. Now on Tarum. 25 political power, 10 army experience, military tactics and doctrines have changed since the end of the Northern Campaign in 1926. The Irish army, on the other hand, has not. It is essential that we stay up to date with the oh, when the outbreak of war in Europe is looking more and more likely. But they, I think this is a, uh, I think this is a negative event behind this German Crimea. Oh no, it's a positive event. Good. Our attempt at flirting with Dutch businesses has been a success. The Dutch airline com uh, airline KLM Royal Dutch Airlines has announced the construction of a new Dublin subsidiary. Oh, excuse me. Dublin continues to expand and our populace will undoubtedly be glad for it. Fantastic. One airbase and 25 political power in Leinster. Rivna Uprising. Which is in the west, yeah. I really like the big Poland we made in the Kojana series. Like, they didn't have any of the German territories whatsoever, but they had all of Galicia. They were, they were basically kind of went up to the uh, Second Republic borders under Pilsudski. They were really fucking big. Because I usually make them quite small. I should definitely do a Poland run sometime. Yeah, yeah, because, like, they've got so much territory to retake. Galicia, the more Galicia, the Ukrainian territories, Belarusian territories, uh, Lithuanian territories, German territories, maybe do some sort of Zapatoslavia. Yeah, that, yeah, that could be good crack. Because they do have a Nat Pop Pat, don't they? They do. Uh, yeah, National Rebirth under, uh... Yeah, you can get Domovsky, Piasecki, Rybarski... Is Robarski the guy we had in the Balbo Kaiser Rubik series? The guy with the big mustache and the big big overcoat? I think it might be. Yeah, it seems like a really good, really good fun run. Plenty of war. Now, a People's Army. 
Out of people's army, which grants division speed plus 2%, division recovery plus 3%, planning speed plus 4%. Our army must be focused on speed and quick planning, adopting some of the tactics that allowed us to defeat the British during the Irish War of Independence uh, to conventional warfare. The Americans reply. The industrial giant General Electric has announced the construction of a new Dublin subsidiary. Fantastic. This will no doubt create quite a few jobs and will help to expand our ever-growing civilian industrial complex. One civilian factory and 25 people power in a building slot. We are bounding ahead. Canadians reply. Fantastic. The armaments producer Canadian Arsenals Limited has announced the construction of a new Dublin subsidiary. This will no doubt create quite a few jobs and the armaments will primarily be used by the Irish Republican Army. Oh, th th did that change because we uh, met, met with the IRA Army Council? Nice, uh, that nice flavour of so. 25 political power, one building slot, one military factory. The Short Brothers Company. Founded in England in 1908, the Short Brothers PLC uh, Public Limited Company, yeah. Is a private air... PLC is public limited company because LTD, a private limited company is LTD, so PLC is private is public limited company, so it can't be private. Anyway, is a private aerospace company with some existing operations in Ulster, having seen their business suffer significant losses thanks to the failure of the British Empire. They are now looking for new opportunities and the expansion of Ulster as their highest priority. We can subsidize their venture at some cost to our nation, but the benefits of having having a prominent aerospace industry are obvious in peace and wartime. So we have Forget it, the budget is tight enough as it is. Who needs planes anyway? 25 for little power. Or we, we can go. Belfast shall become their worldwide headquarters. Throw money at them. Minus 50 political power. Add Short Brothers Aerospace PLC. Minus 5% production cost for fighters. Close air support. Carrier fighters. Jet fighters. Carrier cast. Naval bomber. Carrier naval bomber. Rocket interceptors. Tactical bombers. Jet tactical bombers. Heavy fighters. Strategic bombers. Transport planes. <laughs> and also gets four air bases. Two building slots. And two military factories. Fantastic. We just cannot be stopped. Let's get another one. Oh yeah, nice. And uh, now it's time. To, is it time to start getting other stuff? Maybe. We want on support equipment. Mm. So yeah, do we want tank refurbishment plan support equipment? Do you, do you actually have anything for support equipment? Oh, you do. Okay, you do. But then John Rigby and company is more specialized. It's yeah, it's, it's infantry equipment and it's support equipment. Okay, so we're gonna get John Rigby. Actually, speaking of uh, John Rigby, oh yeah, I need to get on on my infantry equipment. Thank God I noticed it then. Damn it, we've been making guns for almost a year, or uh, rifles rather, and we didn't have that assigned. Damn it! Slip up on my part. Dublin Reborn, you get this event once once we had enough uh, people to invest. Our attempts to cultivate foreign investments in Dublin have been a resounding success. As a result, we now enjoy a significant trade presence on the world's market. Ireland is no longer a backwater to be mocked or derided. She is truly the Emerald Isle. Day of Fortune, good fortune. Uh, or Ye of Fortune would probably be better. There's no H though. 50 political power, and Dublin Reborn, which grants trade deal opinion factor was 35%. Gustav the fifth of Sweden abdicates the throne. Ah, oh, Britain, you said no! You feckers! 141 opinion and you said no. Very sad. Very sad indeed. Who have we got left? I think it's just the French. I think if the Union says yes, you get Vauxhall, which is nice. A&I wins Italian elections and it's Chiano Senior? No, it's Corradini. Okay. I think a Cherbo can pop up as well if, if, if you release like a central Italian... Nap pop puppet or something like that. Alright, lads, this is a good place to leave the episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We, uh, yeah, we, we really increased our industry. Civilian factories looking good. Civilian and, uh, or military factories enabled. Dockyards looking good. We said, yeah, I actually didn't get as far as, quite as far as I thought I would. We're, we're doing a good bit of reading, which I'm quite happy about. But alright lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section, uh, comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.